Hi, welcome to another Lil Lizzie tutorial. Today we'll be looking at the different brushes in Illustrator, how we create them, use them, and save them for use in other documents. Illustrator gives you the ability to create five different types of brushes, calligraphic, scatter, art, bristle, and pattern. One important thing to remember about all the brushes is that they are applied to the stroke of an object and cannot be used as a fill. Let's start by creating a new calligraphic brush. Open your brushes panel. If you don't see it in your workspace, choose Window from the menu bar and select Brushes. As with other Tearaway toolboxes, the brush panel shares one with two other panels, swatches and symbols, and we'll learn more about those in another video. With the brushes panel selected, we can see the default brushes loaded for each document. You can use any of these or choose to create your own. You may also want to use a brush from one of the brush libraries provided by Adobe. This is also where you will find the brushes you create and save under user defined. In fact, you can find brush libraries online that can be downloaded and installed on your system. Onward, let's build some brushes. Click on the new brush icon. Choose calligraphic, click OK. In the brush options dialog box, we can give this brush a unique name, determine the brush angle, whether it's fixed or random, or if it's determined by the pressure of your pen, and that's only when you're using a tablet, and the degree of variation. Let's make a couple of adjustments to start. Key in 55 degrees for the angle and choose random with a variation of 25 degrees. Notice the example window. Nothing seems to have changed. Let's set the roundness to 50% and see what happens. Now if we adjust our angle or variation sliders, our example window provides us with the brush shape according to our adjustments. Playing around in here can lead to some pretty cool brushes. Just one note on the size option. This is the default size for one point stroke weight. In other words, for this brush, every time I increase the stroke weight, it will increase by nine points. For now, set angle to 55 degrees, random with a variation of 25, roundness to 50% fixed, and let's leave the size at nine point fixed. Click OK. I've created a second artboard to demonstrate the brushes we create. In each case, we'll see what happens when our brush is applied to a straight line, a curved line, and the stroke of a shape, in this case, a star. Now I will select each object and apply our new brush stroke. Remember now, if I change the stroke weight, it will change by a factor of nine. Okay, let's go on and create a bristle brush. Back to the brushes panel. This time, click on the menu icon and choose new brush. Notice the option for scatter brush and art brush are dimmed and not available. That's because you need to have an object selected before you can create these types of brushes. One might have guessed that would have been the case for pattern brushes as well, that you would need a pattern in order to create a pattern brush. Except in this case, Illustrator loads up all of the patterns in your pattern library, and you can choose an existing pattern. We'll see an example of that in a bit. For now, choose bristle brush. Again, the Brush Options dialog box allows us to provide a unique name and set other brush parameters. Under Shape, you can select a variety of typical brush shapes using either a round or a flat point. The example window displays the brush type and stroke that it will create. Your example may not look like mine. In this case, it's picked up the settings of the last bristle brush I created. If you're following along, set your brush to shape, round, fan, size, 3 millimeters, bristle length, 100%, bristle density, 33%, bristle thickness, 50%, paint opacity, 75%, stiffness, 50%, and click OK. Our new brush has been added to the brush panel. 
Let's go ahead and apply it on our artboard. Again, the stroke weight is relative to the size of our brush. In this case, three millimeters per increment. Okay. The next couple of brushes will require an object, so we'll use the red star as our base. With the star selected, we can either click on the new brush icon, click on the menu bar and choose new brush, or simply drag and drop the star onto our brushes panel. The only options available are scatter, art, or pattern, because we cannot create either of the other two brushes using a shape. Choose Art and click OK. Here we can change the width, scale options, direction, colorization, flip, and overlap options. I encourage you to play with each of these options, but for now we will choose the width is fixed, scale proportionately, direction is left to right, colorization is none, click OK. In the case of the art brush, the size or shape of your object does not matter. This brush applies one instance of your object and only one instance. So what happens if I apply an art brush to my curve and corner examples? Yikes! With the L still selected, choose Options of Selected Object. This will allow you to change the parameters of the art brush for only this instance of the application. Change the size of the art brush to 2% and see what happens. Now we'll apply the art brush to our star and make a similar adjustment. Select and drag our base star onto the brushes panel and choose Scatter. Click OK. This cool brush gives us lots of options. It's going to draw multiple objects along our path based on these options. Once again, I encourage you to play. For now, let's set the size to random between 20 to 120%. Spacing, random, 80 to 120%. Scatter, random again, 64% and rotation, random at 38%. Accept the remaining defaults and click OK. Now apply and adjust stroke weight to see what happens. Okay, we've created a calligraphic brush, a scatter brush, an art brush, and a bristle brush. Let's create our pattern brush and save this brush library for later use. Remember, there are two ways to create a pattern brush, either from an existing pattern or with a newly created object. On your brushes panel, choose Menu and select New Brush. It at first appears there is nothing created for our pattern brush, but select one of the tiles and Illustrator loads all of the existing patterns. In this case, we're only looking at the two default patterns. For now, let's cancel out of here. Drag and drop the star onto the brushes panel and choose Pattern. Illustrator does its best to guess how you want to handle the outside corner, but you do have options here. This is a personal preference. And the same with the inside corner. 
You can also create and assign the first and last tiles, but for now, let's choose outer corner auto centered, inner corner auto between, accept the remaining defaults, click OK, and apply our pattern brush. With all of your objects still selected, modify the instance of this brush and change the size to 40%. All right, we've created five very different brushes today. Let's save them so we can use them in other documents. On the Brushes panel, choose Menu, Save Brush Library. Illustrator opens your default file folder application at the location it expects to find brush libraries. I recommend you keep this as your default. However, to keep things clean, I also recommend you create a new folder structure within this default location. Now, when you want to use those brushes, on your brushes panel, choose Menu, Select, Open Brush Library. You'll find the folder file structure you created under User Defined. And so we finish our Illustrator Brush tutorial. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up, share with your friends, and leave me a comment below. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified when new videos are posted. Don't forget to check out our website where you can find other free stuff like seamless patterns, deco toners, illustrator brushes, and page borders. That's at www.lillizzy.net. Cheers!